This year, by no stretch of the imagination, has been the cherry on top of a royal cake disaster, which arguably all began on May the 19th, 2018, if you know what I'm talking about, culminating in two cancer diagnoses of the two most popular senior royals. So where did it all go wrong? Or should we be asking, who made it all go wrong? And could the Duke and Duchess of Sussex be at the root of this heartbreaking news? Let's get to the crunch. There is something very unusual that keeps plaguing me in the night ever since the 5th of February this year. The Prostate Cancer Foundation, who are ever on the search to stop cancer, looked into a range of studies focusing on the correlation between cancer and stress. Asking the question, can stress cause cancer? Hi, I'm Dr. Lorelai Mucci with the Prostate Cancer Foundation. Can stress cause cancer? Believe it or not, there's very good evidence that it can. It is a question that many cancer patients also regularly ask their physicians. To many, this may sound like an absolutely ludicrous theory. However, the results of multiple studies continually showed the same thing, that the stress hormone cortisol prevents cancer cell death. The one substance that really prevented the cell death was cortisol. Ultimately securing its chances of growth. In the last five years, the science behind the devastating effects of stress on cancer has become undeniable. Studies have shown that high stress levels can fan the fire of cancer growth. So why are we discussing this very heavy subject? Last year, 2023, on the 28th of November, Omid Scobie released the Dutch version of his book, Endgame. The book was nothing to write home about, but the Dutch version exposed the names of two royals whose names had otherwise been kept a secret ever since Oprah's explosive interview with Meghan Markle. In 2021, Meghan first recklessly called two members of the royal family racist, withholding their names and important details of what racist comments had allegedly been made but exaggerating the severity of the situation by adding how damaging this information would be for the family if she was to release the two names. Among the many other baseless accusations she made, the racist one took the world by storm, causing the Queen's last year to be plagued with stress and unnecessary heartbreak. So when Omid Scobie accidentally released the names of Meghan's two royal racists, he unleashed an unmerited tsunami of stress upon the accused royals, Catherine, Princess of Wales, and King Charles, wreaking havoc across media outlets and devastation within the monarchy. Let's cut to the chase. Time and time again, Meghan's statements have been proven to be false. But regardless of how obviously dishonest Meghan tends to be, when the two names of Catherine, Princess of Wales and King Charles were released to the public by Meghan's sidekick, Omid Scooby, this would have been heartbreaking for the royals, not to mention the damage done to the family of the falsely accused racists. The king, the man who had accepted to walk Meghan Markle down the aisle on her wedding day in place of her absent, or more accurately, uninvited father, and the Princess of Wales, the woman who had welcomed Meghan into the family, bringing her to important engagements, giving her insider advice and helping her learn the ropes. They had both been brutally stabbed in the back in the most reprehensible way possible. The two people that had shown such love to Meghan were hung out to dry by the very woman they had tried to help. It is difficult for normal people to understand what drove Meghan to be so cruel, but what is clear is that devastation reigned and King Charles and Princess Catherine of Wales were thrown into a world of stress and torment. From the names being released at the end of November 2023 to the two shocking cancer revelations just three months later, it makes you question, has the 
intentional pain Meghan inflicted on both royals caused more damage than we could imagine. It certainly seems to reaffirm the studies correlating stress and cancer when we look at the timeline in which the king and princess's names were released to the moment they both received their shocking cancer diagnoses. Catherine, the Princess of Wales, spent much time with the late queen. Their relationship was unique, and in those many conversations, it is certain that Queen Elizabeth II shared her knowledge of how to reign with dignity and grace. It was evident from the princess's speech announcing her cancer treatment, which was written by the princess herself, that she had drawn inspiration from the late queen as she echoes the eloquence of her late majesty throughout. It was a perfect speech of which I'm sure Queen Elizabeth would have been proud. Someone said, for all diagnosed with cancer, please don't lose hope. There is hope. You are not alone. This was what was so poignantly beautiful about how Catherine, the Princess of Wales, released her news to the world. She really made it about everyone who is suffering not she did not make it about her she did not make herself a victim she did not cry about the fact that her personal information had been breached at the hospital or the fact that she had been targeted by the media it was an extremely brave statement to make and so beautifully made not about herself but about everyone who was suffering with her and on the other side of the spectrum here, someone commented saying, I zoomed all the way in and I'm absolutely terrified. This is 100% AI generated. I cannot tell you how frustrating reading comments like this is. There was literally no harm done with her statement. It was beautiful, it was powerful, it was very heartbreaking, and it was very empowering to other people going through the same thing as she is. To read somebody's comment, trying to pull apart what she's done, trying to trying to find flaws in the good that she's doing, it's really devastating. And there are other comments underneath this comment as well, saying things such as the simplest things is that the eyes and the chin definitely do not match. It's just ludicrous. It's absolutely bizarre that people are even thinking about commenting these things. And we just have a glimpse here of what Catherine has had to go through over the last few years. Someone else said, severe stress happened to King Charles, Princess Catherine and the Queen a couple years ago. Stress is one identifier for the onset of cancer and also the demise of elders. Harry and Meghan sending polite wishes is a joke after what they put them through emotionally. I could not agree more with this comment. Why even release a statement saying how sorry they are and how supportive they are for Catherine, the Princess of Wales, when they potentially are the cause of the problem? It's very frustrating. Someone else said, all Meghan wanted was for Omid to name names so she didn't have to. She chose the wrong way and the wrong time to do it. Malicious plans often backfire. Now, I hope, obviously, no one even I'm hopeful that Harry and Meghan would never have wished for this to be the outcome. And no one can really understand the amount of stress that um, the Princess of Wales and King Charles were under after these names were released to the public. But this is why you don't play with fire because things can backfire and an awful outcome that I'm sure no one could have anticipated. However, you do hope in these situations that some good can come of it. Um, for example, Meghan and Harry could see that they've gone too far and backtrack a little bit or apologize. I can't, I can't really imagine that happening, but you can hope, one can hope. Hit like if you think the Sussexes should apologise for their racism comments and subscribe to help the Crown family blossom. Tap the notification bell so you don't miss a future episode and we'll see you down in the comments.